doing pretty sick actually, but I don't know. Yeah? Not much you can do about it. Yeah, I know, I know. So so you're okay or do you want to delay the session? No, I can do it now, I'm fine. Alright, let's do hand reviews then. Okay, cool. Alright. Uh more. wanna share you, you wanna share your screen? Yes, of course. Okay. You probably have some mark hands, maybe some recorded hands and such. Yeah, so I we do can some more we can hands. go a little bit over them. Especially if they're like tough spots. Wait one second. Yeah, sure. And next hour, like the last hour, we can do Flopzilla. No problem. Okay, yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I, ha I haven't forgot. It's just I have Flopzilla on the other Windows, so I, I I would need to like restart my computer, and getting onto Windows 7 is such a pain in the ass. So... I see. And... Okay. But I'll, 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 I'll have it next time prepared. Yeah, yeah, yeah I see your screen perfectly. Mm -hmm. All right, so we got this Pocket Kings, B3 bad. Yeah, sizing, sizing wise is fine. Uh, we get. Well, what happens now? We get cold. Okay. We get well, good that's flop. sort of like the perfect board. Bet, get raised, or call. Okay. No, just so call. You, guy flats. And then and... seven on turn. Uh, pff, th this is a pretty weird spot. Uh, like, the weirdness is that you're probably not going to get called by tens or jacks. Okay. Uh, Queens probably calls one more time, but uh, tens or jacks doesn't. So, like, maybe nines or it depends if you best polish. So, like, here, I bet one-third pot to try to get value from those pairs. Queens is calling. Jack is probably one-third pot calling. And, yeah, I, I don't think there's much value in betting, like, 260 or something. I don't think you're going to get called yeah, by worse. So, two is probably again. a lot. It's probably a lot. I, I bet, like, 120 or something like that. Even less than one-third pot, like 30%. Jack got called. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is definitely check back on the river if he jams up folding, probably. Yeah, easy check back. Yeah, okay, I made a mistake. Ooh, ooh, oh! I got shoved down. Nines or tens? <laughs> okay. I don't think he's good enough to you? shove with tens, so easy fold. I don't think he's good enough to shove with tens there, so I think it's like pocket nines almost always. Yeah, well, I paid him off. Wow, 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 wow. Guess it's a huge he's mistake. He's supposed to have, look, he's supposed to have... Like, when he calls your 3-bet and he's early position, he's supposed to have either, like, ace-king, queens, jacks, tens, nines. That's the range that you should should put him on, okay? So, I think the worst, like, maybe the only bluff that he could have here would be, like, I don't know, maybe maybe ace-queen or ace-king of diamonds. That's kind of it. So, calling is not an option here. We just need to let it go. No, I get it. Maybe he's bluffing at all. So, mm -mm. Not yet, it is time. He will have yes. it most of the times. <laughs> yeah, okay, I get it. Doesn't, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> if it's ace nine or whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, bet smaller on the turn. Check back river always. Big mistake for betting river. Yeah, I get it. And then it. super big mistake for like calling it off. Okay. Next hand, aces. And it gets okay. squeezed. Okay. And like, yeah. would you four bet here? Yeah, because I don't want the other guys coming along. So. I'm um, kind of keep don't like I don't really want them to come along with pocket pairs because it's kind of like sort of break even towards marginal profitable for them, especially if they have some sort of suited connectors or whatever. It's gonna be really complicated. Big pocket pairs, you want to play them heads up, okay? So I'd make it something like 255, uh, maybe two uh, really so small somewhere around that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, well, uh, remember this. Remember this. Whenever you're four betting or three betting or like your biggest uh, your biggest idea is not to make them call with smaller pocket pairs profitably. OK, so for this guy to not call with smaller pocket pairs profitably, you need to make it over 10 blinds. All right. Always. So making it something like 260 is fine here. All right. OK, like he's yeah, going to well, know that you don't, you're not bluffing, but generally it's fine to. Uh, oh, by the way, is this zoom? Yeah, this yeah, is it is. Uh, make, either making it to 60 or just open, like just jamming, both are fine. Okay. Yeah, I jamming might rep oh. uh, <laughs> a lot weaker, so like ace king or queens. So that's why I kind of prefer jamming versus this big squeeze with aces. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, the question is, to, to be honest, the question is, what do you do with queens or ace king in this spot? We we'll probably call them as well. Ace king is a Pretty weird. So he's a uh, wait, wait. So we I have might, 
fold ace king actually. Yeah. I don't. I don't. Ace king offsuit kind of a fold here. Queens is okay to call. Uh, so he we have 29 hands on him, right? Yes. What's what's his stats? So this is his V pip, V bar, and three bet. Um, yeah, pretty irrelevant on 29 hands, but might be with Ace King. I don't mind four bet uh, like versus this guy. I don't mind actually four betting small, and then actually like if he jams, we kind of have to call, but it's close though, so we could potentially fold versus. So like if we four bet 260 with Ace King, we got blockers, so that's cool, and he also might be. Uh, squeezing way too much, right? Uh, the complicated part is after we invest 260, if he has queens plus an ace king in his jamming range, then we have to call, and it's sort of like break even. But if he has only kings plus, then we're fucked. So we gotta fold. So I, I, between the two cases, I definitely fold ace king. But I, I would consider actually four betting here. Ace king suited, I flat, and queens, I probably flat. And jacks. Fold. Jacks I fold because it's going to be really, really hard to play, especially if we're three away. Jacks get 60% of the time's over card on flop, so it's hard. You can't really call only to set mine, which you're probably doing with Jacks. Yes, okay. And some other guy comes mm -hmm. along. I'm never folding this flop. It's impossible for me. And now the I original just... Razor Jacks, would you bet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely need to bet because... But wait, so this guy is 10 hands, 30 and 0? Yeah, I have to bet. I have to bet for value here. 180 is fine. Jump yeah, almost any turn. But I guess, I guess I'd guess i probably bet more. Because maybe this Niku whatever uh, has a flush draw. Okay? So if you bet like this, you're actually not getting any value from a flush draw. You're only getting value from a jack that has worse worse odds than, versus your hand than pot odds. Right? So I'd bet a lot higher. I expect this Nikul to whatever to never fold the jack because he kind of looks like a loose passive. So I just generally just do it. By the way, what's yeah, the so number that's beside the hands? Where? Uh, the number that's beside the hands. So you said that VP... Oh, uh, this one. Yeah. This is cold call. All right. Interesting. Yeah. So it's probably generally, the so generally loose passive... Even on ten hands, he never raised. He only called three times. So, I guess that I can definitely, I can definitely bet higher to get value. He's never folding a jack. He's never folding a flush shot. So bet a lot higher. Like three dollars? Yeah, three, even three twenty, something like that. Just go, go, go big, go big, so that he can really call with a flush shot. Yeah. All right, so you yeah, bet here, it. and you get called, and this guy shoves or fold? okay, he folds. Jam any turn. Immediately. Okay, perfect. No, 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 no. You're giving him a free card. <laughs> Jump turn. You gotta understand that loose passives will never let go of a jack. Okay? So if yeah. he's got ace jack, king jack, queen jack, this guy is not folding here. Plus, you didn't 4 bet pre flop, right? So this means you probably don't have aces. So he's thinking that you have a jack also. So just shove turn. You, this see. is not a reg, okay? You don't have to be afraid only of sets, right? There are a lot of hands that call you that are worse. That 10 doesn't help though, but he doesn't always have two pair, right? Then makes it makes it even rarer that he has uh, jack ten. So he has, he's got uh, queen jack, king jack, some combos of ace jack that calls to jump. And you're protecting yeah. yourself versus flush draws. You don't have the ace of spades, so he could yeah, definitely. Yeah, so you're giving have... a free card. That's a huge mistake here. I yeah. See. Yeah, yeah. He's loose passive. Jump. Okay, min raise. Let's no, get just get it him right. At this point, at this point, you're supposed to raise. Yeah. All right. But can he head it this time? Whatever. Pocket threes. Nice hand. Yeah. Nice hand. Whatever. Yeah, okay, but so this not a problem. What's the just call instead of four betting uh, free flop a huge mistake? Uh, to be honest, it's not huge, but I really, really love to just four bet here. So like generally, when you got aces kings, and uh, it, to be honest, it's not really that huge of a mistake because you have a fishy guy behind, so he might like come along. Okay, he got lucky here. Like it's it's not a huge mistake. Uh, but I definitely just want a four bet. You'll have surprises that fishy guys call call four bet sometimes with weird stuff. So I just I just go for the four bet and try to stack off versus this struck guy. Yeah, I see. Then uh, yeah, I see the turn is a huge mistake. Turn is just jam. Like jam, you're giving his flush us free cards, and these guys don't really like loose passives are not aggressive. They won't jam flush us on turn when you check. Okay. No, I see. All right. This hand, 
but it's good because you're getting you're getting too too high raise from the small blind. Uh, you're getting fishy guys because the jacks are better promotion, right? Uh, yes. yes. Yeah, that's good. That's good. You're getting fishy guys. Sure. Yeah, don't you like the 3.5x? No, I just line? go for three. I, I don't think 3.5 will make any difference. Hmm. I think it buys a little active fold equity, but I'm not sure. It might like, in zoom should... if versus people who don't have hands on you. I guess. No, okay. Would you just three x from every position? Yeah, yeah, no mid ten, yes. I and think starting about... from like no mid fifty, you can go for like two point five from the cutoff and two point one from the button. And small blind, it really depends on your opponents, but wouldn't generally... you rather open? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you rather open the button for three x? I I and... like. All the positions lower? Versus, no. Um, I like early position, middle position. In general, if you make it like 3x and then seabed, you're going to get more uh, more fold equity. From the button, though, uh, it depends on your opponents. The only test, like versus fishy guys, I always open 3x. I might open 4x. I might even open more, depending on how much they call preflop. Okay? It's like they have, a, uh, everyone has a size that they call, like every fishy guy has a size, that they call regardless, with their range, regardless, okay? So I might 5x button, I might do more. Versus, versus so there, there are sort of like two cases where I do like the 2.1x from the button. First of all, versus an opponent who three bets a lot, like 20, 20%, small blind, 20%, big blind, at least I make it small so that I can call three bets easier, and when I fold, I lose less. Second is when I have a short stack in the blinds, who's actually a reg. Okay, so he, he, he has to 3-bet a lot because he's short, he's playing the short stack strategy, so he has to 3-bet a lot, so I lose less when I fold, and then I can do the same game and stack off uh, regularly versus, versus short stacks. Understood? Yeah, I get it. Okay? Alright. We called. How we about just check calling the flop? I'll explain to you why. It's like... He doesn't have that many hands that are actually worse here that call, and you can get you can get value from those hands later. It's like, sure, he, does he have queen eight offsuit? Probably not. Correct. Uh, I guess some of the hands that he's calling the flop are like king jack, uh, ace jack, right? Jack ten, and that's kind of it. Okay, maybe nine ten suited if he's calling versus C or small line open. So that's kind of it. And sure, you can while well, you can get value from these hands. The problem is that turn is going to be really hard to play, correct? If you bet flop with queen 10, and then a brick lands on the turn, and then you check, and he bets turn. You're probably calling, yeah, because you have the open ender, but then he bets river. What do you do? You have no idea. You probably have to fold, but to be honest, on the turn, you're pretty much behind. Yeah, I see. Okay? If, if you call. So, uh, check, I think check calling flop is the best option here. Okay, well, I went for the bet. <laughs> oh, what? But you understand, and yeah, life sucks. Yeah, I understand. But... I don't know. I think it's actually there are enough hands that will call you that are worse. Yeah, but like, you, have protect, 10, you have to protect. You have to protect 10. your check calling range here. Okay. Yeah, I see. So essentially, when he raises, we're calling here because we got almost pot odds for the queen plus straight, right? Um, we also have the backdoor diamonds, which helps us a lot. Okay, if it's like Queen of Queen of Hearts, Jack of Clubs, Nine of Spades, I would be less happy, but I'd still call. But the backdoor diamonds are awesome. Okay, so yeah, I guess like three betting here makes no sense. Okay. No. All right. So call, right? I think I made three bets anyway. Oh, <laughs> that's pretty bad, man. Because now you're turning your hand. What 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 value hands do you do this with on this flop? King ten, right? 10-8 yeah. suited, or 10-8 offsuit that you open from the small blind. Pocket nines, pocket jacks, pocket queens. Okay, queen jack you should definitely call versus a raise, you shouldn't re-raise. So, definitely you're turning a hand that has a lot of equity and a lot of showdown value into a bluff. Okay? This hand has massive potential, it has the backdoor diamonds. You don't want to get shoved on on this flop and then you, you can't even oh, call, yeah. okay? I see. Because he's going to have king 10 and sets when he does this. Yeah. Like, not the first raise, but the second raise. Okay, so he calls your three, but now you're fucked because you have no idea what to do. All right, no, no idea what to, to do. You check, yeah? No, you, oh my god. Well, I like bet. That's, 
this is this is this is in the spew category right now okay so like the, the, <laughs> think about this think about this you have like your top hands that you're supposed to three bet the flop with you have hands that you're supposed to call the flop with and you have hands that you're supposed to fall to the raise which are probably like ace jack or like ace nine but ace, ace nine or ace jack it's way better to just check call the flop right so to be honest i just like check calling flop would have been tons better but also calling calling the flop or raise would have been tons better than re-raising. So you took it way, way, way too far. And now on the turn, by the way, on the turn, he just calls. So he might be slow playing King 10. So now he jams over you. And you're fucked because you can't even call this. It's going to be really complicated. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, I see. It's a huge mistake. We just right, so call. he calls turn. Probably Queen Jack. Uh, if he didn't jump turn, I'm thinking like Queen Jack or maybe some like pocket nines, I guess. But... I, th I still think he should have stacked off with sets. So now you check the river, and he probably gives up also with the nines, yeah. How did you win nah. this? I don't know. Okay, so he did <laughs> this with 10-9. Imagine this. You you bet flop, he raises, you call, okay? You check turn, he bets, you call. Ace on the river. He doesn't bet anymore, okay? So you want the pot. No need to make it that big. He's going to jump the flop with 10-8, with king-10, with all the sets, right? Yeah. So you lose your privileges of actually seeing the turn, which could be really helpful. Okay. So um, check all flop or bet and call the raise. Never re-raise. Stop re-raising yeah, and stop re-raising or three betting with uh, open and straight draws or pair plus flush draw or flush draw just flat. Okay. Yeah, I get it. I'm ashamed how bad I played it. It's okay. <laughs> you don't have to be ashamed. Just just follow follow what I'm saying because it's gonna help you in the long run a lot. Okay. Yeah, I like if you want to beat like normal 25 zoom or something like that, you can't really find these goofy guys around there a lot, right? You, you find less and less as you go up and up. You find less and less of these guys, right? So it's gonna be, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be, it's gonna yeah. be tough to to do that. Okay. What's the main leak at 25 and now? <sighs> General neediness and neediness never to. raise bluffing. <laughs> um. Let's try to think about so uh, overplaying some hands. So people stop. People generally at normal 25 zoom, they kind of stop. Um, they kind of stop stacking off with ace king randomly or with queens randomly. Um, let's say so like folding a lot to steals. There are some people who are overly aggressive. So if you're just tight versus them, it's fine. It's like you don't even have to do anything special. Not adjusting to your opponents will be a leak that will be even at node mid 100. So not playing an adjusted game, right, versus them. And yeah. just playing like normal system. And some players are just extremely nitty. But, but by the way, like there's this nitty guy that's playing. You should have saw him. Like I had a coaching with uh, what a heck. Uh, on my stream at some point, and he showed me a guy that was playing Nolmit 200 with 1091. Okay, so like <laughs> because this is Zoom, people interpret it as a lot weaker, right? So he's extremely tight. He gives up blinds. He oh, by the way, in in like 500 hands, he never called a raise ever. Really? Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was he profitable? Or... Yeah, no. well, obviously because he's playing higher. Like he was at Nolmit 50, and then what the heck saw him at Nolmit 200? Okay, and he never called a freaking raise. So, yeah, it's, it's just, it's just, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. He was playing 10, 10, 9 or 9, 8, 1. So only three betting like kings plus or maybe aces and bluffs and that's it. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, you don't, yeah. you don't need to do a lot of stuff because people will just give their money to you at some point if you have aces, right? So, yeah. Yeah, I see. Okay, yeah, everything, time. everything that's special is meant to exploit the super small edges that you might have on your opponents. But 3-betting Queen-10 on that flop is actually letting him exploit your edge of 3-betting uh, flop way too often with hands that have really have showdown value. Yeah, I see. But that's also bad for my uh, calling a raise range, right? If I 3-bet that hand. Yeah, yeah, because you call less. But it's, it's still you're playing back at him. So it's not really that bad, but like it's you should be thinking like super super logically versus these guys, okay? It's like he three bet the flop. What does he three bet the flop with? Like bluffs and hands that are way better than mine, right? Yes. Okay. Now my hand versus bluffs is good. 
versus those uh, super hands is not. What happens if I three bet the flop? The bluffs fold and the super hands jab or call, right? Or like slow, slow play. So then it doesn't make sense. But if I call, the bluffs might continue bluffing, right? Or they just give up and I win. So let's say he's bluffing like 20% of the times. That's still okay because I got relative pot odds, okay? But still, versus the, his sets, I still have some equity on the turn. I can hit the straight. Or I can hit diamonds, which are 10 possible cards, another 20%, right? So basically, thinking about this, I can call. Like, it's it's okay to call. I got sort of like pot odds, right? Yes, I see. Right, so n not even implied odds. Like, I got pot odds plus some implied odds for, like, backdoor diamonds. But that's still okay. So, like, if you hit the diamond on turn, by the way, you got even pot odds to call pot because you got an open ender plus a flush jaw. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Plus top air. Mm -hmm. Or is it not relevant? Top air is not really relevant because if he's raising always something better than top air or bluff. All right, this is how you should be thinking. Yeah. Or semi-bluff, or no. That's pretty rare, and that mm. board is not really flushed. Okay, so it's super rare that someone... Like, that 10-9 was extremely, extremely rare uh, rare race there, okay? It's it's actually a weird one. So I got lucky. I see. <laughs> yeah, you got super lucky, because he actually called your... He actually called your 3-bet on the flop, and called your turn bet, which to me spells death <laughs> okay so and, and he gave up on the river when you check river he gave up on the river which is super weird i see yeah because he's never winning there okay i think this one is not lines you lines all right three yeah. betting there I, I like flatting is fine i like three betting more with yeah, like you, Jack so you like three betting more yeah 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 because he's opening from the button any suited king and ace, so you get dominated. He's opening uh, ace jack, king jack, queen jack, which is folding a lot versus three bets. This guy is a 32 23, three bets zero over 22 hands. And 67 is what? Fold to three bets. Uh, not that big of a sample, but I, I don't mind three betting jack 10 suited here. In the long range, it's actually pretty okay. It's a hand that well, has very, very three. good equity versus his uh, three bet calling range. Yeah, and it's also blocking some hands that he calls three bets with, so that's fine. Yo, I, uh, he called. All right. Uh, this flop is not great for. It's like, uh, it's it's really close though because we don't have a lot of info on him. So, um, going for actually, um, it's like backdoor plus overcards should not really be. It's like our, our equity should not really be considered in this spot. But his calling range should. Because he does have some pairs, right? I'd expect him to have some 8s, 9s, 10s, jacks, maybe, maybe queens, okay? So that's like, we have a jack and a 10, so that's blocked, right? And then he has pocket 8s, pocket 9s, and pocket queens, right? So 18 combos plus the jacks and 10, another 3 and 3. So that's basically 24 combos. If he's calling you with ace, queen, and like, King Queen or Ace Queen and Ace King here, he's got automatically more combos that full turn to a double barrel than than pair combos. Okay, um, I would say something like one third on the flop, so we're sure that he's calling with Ace Queen and Ace King, and then half pot the turn. Okay, how's that? How about like betting one third pot on the flop and then like three quarters on the turn? Uh, I think that's sort of like overkill. But I think it's like we're trying to fold ace king and ace queen. I don't think he's gonna fold something like pocket nines. No, I see. All right. I we don't have info. He's at 20, 32, 23. Difference between VPIP and PFR that we talked about, by the way, is pretty big. So he's a bit to, towards the calling side, right? Yeah. So that means he's gonna call. Like generally, this kind of like transgresses into also post flop. So it's. It's sort of like it's sort of like I suggest just doing the half pot on turn should be should be okay should be okay. But yeah, yeah. like uh, three quarters is a bit it's convincing it's convincing. I see. Well, I I usually make like half pot bets on three bet pots. Like, is it a huge mistake or is it also? No, it's high? not a huge mistake, but. Uh, look, you want to be sure that he's calling with ace queen and ace king on the flop. Like the plan is to get a big uh, on the turn to to get big fold equity, right? 
Yeah. Right? So, essentially, even if, look, even if a queen or a king or an ace comes on the turn, that's still good because then he's going to be folding the pairs. Okay? So his <laughs> range true. is not really protected. It's very, actually, very weak here. So, I think that betting one third pot so that he calls with everything and then betting like like two thirds. Let's let's agree on two thirds, okay? Not half pot, but not three quarters. Going for two thirds on the turn really looks like value. Really looks like you're heading towards a shove. So I think that betting some like seventy on the flop, and then if he calls, and he probably will call, then betting something like two sixty or two fifty on the turn would be like massive, massive profit on the turn. Yes, I see. Why well, you call this one? Okay. You got an ace. This is a good card. This is a great card. Uh, you can go for, but now you have no idea if you called or not with Ace King or Ace Queen, but that's still okay, okay? Because you, the Ace is also blocking a little bit, so you still get full deck. Could he go for two thirds here? And like, it's not like 280. Yeah, 280 would be fine. Yeah, well, I went a little bit smaller, 250. Yeah, I, I guess it's okay. Mm -hmm. And race. Nice hand, GG. And now we shall? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course we don't. No, he's got, he's got like either ace king or some sort of ace five suited or ace deuce maybe. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but I feel like I'm situations. leaking a lot of money in spot like these. You, you know, have to, yeah, but you have to think about like your opponents and their calling ranges. And sure, we can work a little bit on that even next time. But you have to figure out if an opponent is a 32 23, even on 22 hands. He's generally going to call more hands than a 21-16, like you are, versus 3-bets. Understood? Yeah. So you have to account for more hands in his uh, calling range. That means he might have it. He will probably have 8, ace-queen, uh, maybe even king-queen offsuit. King-queen suited for sure, queen-jack suited for sure. So betting something like one third on the flop will have the effect of getting all those hands to call. And then on any... Any non-jack, non-10 turn. Oh, by the way, jack or 10 turn, easy check call, okay? I think we're clear on that. Yes. Any yeah, any card that's not uh, jack or 10, you're supposed to bump the turn so that you get... Ma because you only need, like, you bet two-thirds. You only need 40%. But he's going to be folding a lot more than that, okay? And yeah, don't, don't think that when he raises turn, he actually ever bluffs it's not possible okay <laughs> it's like he's got ace king or something like that okay he has it but the bet on the turn is fine i think i think betting like 250 uh, sorry uh, half pot on the flop is overkill right so then if you bet only one third the pot on the turn will be something like uh 350 and it's going to be a lot it's like betting 250 into 350 will have a, a lot like bigger massive effect right Yes. And you don't even yes. need to bet 250. You can bet some like 220 or 210 or whatever or two, and it's still okay. Yeah, Sage right. Lopez was a six five rainbow, for example. Would you still bet one third pot there? Is it your uh, default sizing on the three bet pot? A six five would have been a bit different because I'm thinking about his calling range, and no, it's no. I guess it's still okay. Yeah. Betting something like one third, and then doing like he, his call, his call with a lot of pocket pairs, and then <laughs> betting something like a bit over half pot on turn, right, to get the full equity from those pairs. But sometimes, look, uh, sometimes it kind of happens. Uh, just one sec. Uh, I'm sorry. I'll be right back in 30 seconds. Sorry. Okay. Cool. Yeah. You're back? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, one third fluff, uh, half, a bit over half pot on turn, should be fine. Yeah, so always bet one third pot in the free bet pot. Um, I That's go, look, 
if I know that someone is pretty needy and he's gonna call me with nines, tens, jacks, maybe even queens and ace king, then if I get a flop that's ace king x or king queen x or ace queen x, I will just bet two thirds on the flop and then be done with it. Okay, because I know that on the flop he can't possibly call me with like jacks, tens, and nines. He's gonna fold, right? He's gonna be scared of the pot. So then. Uh, I know that I'm getting my fold equity on the flop and there's absolutely no reason to bet turn, correct? Yes. Yeah, so you, you have to think how, how the board uh, hits their range and are they going to be scared and fold some pairs on turn or fold some... Like, how will your bet sizes influence like their range? And to be honest, versus this guy, like one third, you're probably never going to get any uh, fold equity on the flop. But the difference is that you bet the flop and then you change your bet size higher on the turn, okay? So that actually gets you pretty good fold equity on the turn. So like you're, the thing is you, you can set yourself up for a profitable spot. That's what you're doing with the one-third pot on the flop. To be honest, I don't care. You can bet like one-fourth on the flop. It doesn't matter, all right? Yeah. Like yeah. on the turn, make it look that you have something. And then he's going to fold a big part of his reign. Yeah, it makes sense. All right. Okay, so this hand does no spew? <laughs> no, this hand is fine. I think this hand is perfect. First one. <laughs>